Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs using Canva for platforms such as Merch by Amazon, Etsy, Amazon Seller Central, eBay, Redbubble, and many more. So if that's something that you're interested in, please stick around. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over uh, how to create flags. Um, specifically, I use Printful, but um, there are other print companies that have their own flags that may have their own dimensions, but uh, these are the dimensions that I have for the flags that I make through Printful, and I do sell them on Etsy. I sell them on Amazon Seller Central, so you can put them up on a lot of different POD platforms. Um, so this is the design I'm making right here, it just says Happy Halloween, and it's just a simple, fun Halloween flag that a family could put up at their house or school teacher or whatnot. So if you're interested in learning about flags and learning how to make this design on Canva, go ahead and stick around. So for today's video, we are going to be going over how to create a flag. Um, this is specifically flags for Printful. Different flags may have different um, different sizes and so you might have to if you use a different uh, company other than Printful look to see what the dimensions and the size of their flag is but otherwise the basic um, the basic rules remain more or less the same and so this is a template that I got from print uh, from Printful for their for their all over print flags and just so that you're aware it pretty much matches up with um, 5,618 pixels and then 3,500 pixels. So that's what I have right up here. That's uh, 5,618 pixels by 3,500 pixels. And, and so that will be the size of the flag that we will be designing on today. So when it comes to flags, I kind of treat them the same as posters for the most part. You're looking at an all over print thing. So you need the design to go from edge to edge and you have to have a little bit of space around the edges to allow for bleed and for crop. So you make sure that nothing important is right around the edge, but you do have to make sure that the image goes all the way to the edge. Um, when it comes to niches for flags, um, holidays are great. A lot of people will put up flags for different holidays. Causes can be great. If you're looking at protests or marches, sometimes people will have flags. So there's a lot of different um, things that you can create flags for. Same applies for posters. Of course, you need to make sure that everything is, again, trademark checked and that you're not infringing on any copyrights. Um, so for this example, I'm gonna go ahead and make a Halloween flag. Uh, it is summer now, so the next season is fall, so why not start early? So we're just gonna make a Halloween flag. Uh, it's gonna be cute, it's gonna be simple, but I want it to be Halloween-y, something that you know people might put up at their house. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to elements and I'm gonna start with the background. I want something that is gonna fill the entire kind of page. So I'm just gonna start broad and I'm gonna put Halloween. And so now I'm starting really broad. I'm not gonna sort by photos or graphics yet. I'm just gonna see what I get. And so, so there's a lot of really cool photos that we can use sort of as the backdrop for our flag. So something like this one here that's kind of got the graveyard or something with the pumpkin. Um, something here that one looks good again so any of these would make really good sort of backgrounds on which to build on um, so you can go ahead and pick anything that you like that you think might look good it depends whether you want it to be bright and colorful or more black and white like that and so again you can just really scroll through get some good ideas of what's available to you you can always make multiple flags and that's what's fun and I can just see there's just so many cool ones that I could work with. Um, something like that looks really cool. And even if I hit one, magic recommendations will come up and then I can see there's a lot more that are similar. I don't know, these are just sort of similar colors, but I've left Halloween. <laughs> I've left Halloween entirely, but there's um, a lot of fun ones. So let's just say I wanted to do something like this where I've got you know, sort of the mansion in the background or the haunted house. And I got the tree, got a little bit of a graveyard. And so let's say I start with something really simple like that. It's just meant to be in the backgrounds. 
And again, there's just so many fun things. So unless I find something better, I'm just gonna use this as an example for now. Ooh, this one. This one's more or less the same, right? It's got a little bit more open space. I kind of think I like that one a little better. Let's see. They're very similar, but again, you can sort of play with how you like that. Okay. I think I like that one. Oops. What happened? Back. <laughs> there it is. I like this one a little bit better. So I'm going to go with this one now for my backdrop. And so now I'm going to have some things in the foreground and I'm going to have some writing. It is a, um, a Halloween flag. So I'm just going to go ahead and put happy Halloween on it. I can use regular text or I can even see if they've got any happy Halloween designs because as you can see here sometimes there's writing like that says boo here's something that says happy Halloween and so I could just totally put happy Halloween up like that oops I lost my backdrop again go away I don't want that one anymore there we go so I could always do something like this as Happy Halloween. I don't like this one. It blends in too much, but as an example, you can always come up with some really cool things, some cute ghosts. So I'm thinking maybe for the foreground of this cool house, there's all sorts of fun things. Maybe I'll put some cats, some cute black cats in the front. So let's just say, there's a fun Halloween one too. Happy Halloween, and I can change the colors of this one a little bit. So again, lots of fun ways I can go, right? I was gonna look for some black cats. So let's just see, black cat. And now I do want graphics for this one. And so I'm gonna see if I have any cute black cats that I might wanna put on here. There's already a little black cat there, but maybe I'm going for something a little cuter, something like that's a little bit cuter there. Here are some which ones. What? A little bit of some witchy ones. And so you do have to sort of play for a while, you know, see what you, um, what you can come up with. But there's always a lot of really good options. It literally just takes looking through a lot of things to sort of find what you like. That one's cute with the hat. That one's cute with the hat. Um, <laughs> that one's just silly. Another cute one with the hat. So once you kind of find a style that you like, you might want to kind of stick with it. Another cute one with the hat. I do like the idea of the little witch's hat. So I can either find a hat or a cat that has the hat that I like, or I can just find a hat and put it on top of the cat that I like. Um, so again, different fun ways. What if I put black cat with which hat? <laughs> really see if I can narrow it down. Oh, well, I got witch hats. Oops, sold something. Um, so I can just get some witch hats here. Those are cute. If I wanted to just try to put the hat on the cat, I could do it like that. That rhymed, uh-huh. <laughs> so you can see lots of fun things. I like that one too. Anyways, I'm going to be scrolling for a long time. You can see if I really take my time on this. Uh, that's cute. I know there were some other ones that I liked, but I'll be looking for a long time, I think. And so for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and move it along because this could go on forever. Oh my God, that's the one I want. <gasps> yes, that one, that one's adorable. Yeah, that one wasn't as cute. Here we go. I like this dude. So this dude's really cute and I'm gonna put him here. I might even cover up this black cat. Well, yeah, maybe not, depends. Let's see what I can do. Was there more? Yes, there's more. Here we go, magic recommendations. Here's another one. Oh, that one's cute in the pumpkin. Okay, so yeah, maybe I use the pumpkin one to cover up the other black cat. And I kind of go with this black cat and this black cat. It'd be really awesome if I could find a third one, that would be great. Everything looks better in threes, if not, no worries, but a third one would look totally cool. What do I got here? Nope, that's the one I got. I'd have to stick with these two. Very cute though. 
or an owl. Okay. Well, we can stick with this. I think those are really adorable. And so I could do something like this in the foreground. Maybe I make them a little bit bigger because it's in the foreground. I want it to take up a little bit more space. That's kind of cute. And again, I don't know if you can see the borders here really well. Um, I do have the template over it. So right here is going to be my first sort of border. So again, I don't mind the outside going all the way to the edges, but when it comes to elements that I want to keep on the page, I want to make sure that they fall right with inside these initial borders so nothing's getting cut off. So, so far that looks pretty good. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to bring him to the front so he's in front of that one. And I can get the little tail in there too. And I think that's cute. I do still want to put Happy Halloween up in the top corner. So maybe I do something like this and I put Happy Halloween and see what comes up with. See if there's any text I like. Oh yeah, lots of different texts that I can go with. And of course, if you have a font that you like, you can always just write Happy Halloween and use whatever font you want. So that's not a big deal either. Some of these, of course, I can change the colors. And so like this one's really cute. I could come up here. And then if I wanted to change the color to make it pop a little bit more, maybe a little bit more into the, the cat hat, something like that, I could do it. And now let's say I wanted a little bit of a shadow on this um, because this is a little light, but the other color was a little dark. I mean, one way I could do it is literally just duplicate the design. So if I hit Control D and now I make the second one that darker color, so now I've got a darker one on top of a lighter one, I could do that. And then I can just use my arrow keys to line them up however I want to get as much or as little of a shadow as I want. And so that's one really easy way to get a shadow effect if you're using a graphic as opposed to text. So I can do that. I could flip it the other way and make the lighter color on top and the darker color on the bottom. And all I'd have to do is put send backwards and now the lighter one is on top and the darker ones on the bottom. So you can see lots of different ways I can do that. I liked it the other way better. And you can keep playing so I can go through, see if there's any other ones that I like more. Again, so you really can play with these. Um, I mean, I could spend a long time, honestly, coming up with cool different designs that are just really fun and, and cool to play with. I do like the idea of like a spider web there. Now I'm thinking about it. Let me put spider web. Spider web. And so maybe just a spider web that's kind of on the corner, maybe coming out of the corner of the design. What do I got here? And something where I can change the color, make it maybe some whitish color so that it's popping a little bit. Whoop. And so something like that. No, is that not quite to the edge of my design? There it is, there it is. Oops, keep doing that. I don't wanna lose the background. There it is. So that's looking pretty cool right there. I'd have to make sure that goes edge to edge. And so I could do something like that. And so right now this is just looking like a really cute flag, right? And so this is something that, you know, um, people might want to hang up on their um, spider, maybe that people might want to hang up at their house for Halloween, maybe somebody who has some little kids. So it's kind of a cute Halloween design. It's not, um, it's not anything. There's my little spider hanging there, which it's not going to make a difference. There we go. Something like that. Um, it's not something that's going to scare away little kids. It's something cute. It's something that maybe a school teacher would put in their classroom. So there's a lot of different ways you can go with flags. Most people aren't putting up really scary Halloween flags. I mean, if you're going to do something scary, you're going to decorate but if you're gonna put up a flag it's usually kind of cute so kind of keep that in mind for holidays you're looking at people who have little kids or want to do something cute or teachers and so always kind of go more that way so I like the way this looks right now I could keep going but it's pretty simple pretty straightforward it's just a little happy Halloween sign 
I might even think about making the Happy Halloween bigger, but for now, I think that it's okay. So once I have it the way I want it, I can always, oops, I need to take this template off. What do I got here? Oh, I don't have it. Do I have it separated from the background? Is that the problem? No, that is just a template. Okay. The template's confusing me. And there it is. There's your flag right there. It says Happy Halloween. Very cute. And it's just got some basic simple elements there. And so that that's literally it for a flag. I'm just going to title this uh, Halloween flag. And then I can save it. Now, because it's not going on a shirt or anything, it is a you know, um, all over print item. We don't need to have um, a transparent backdrop. So we can still save it as a PNG, but you don't need to have the transparent backdrop at all. Um, so I'm just gonna come up here, hit download. I'm gonna leave it alone as a PNG and I'm just gonna download it as is. And so this will make a really cool flag. And so that is it for this video. Um, I hope you guys can get creative. There's a lot of cool things that you can do for flags. Um, back to school is coming up soon too. And so if you wanna make some back to school flags that, um, that kids could stand by and, and have pictures, those are good too. And then again, just the holidays and the seasons, fall flags are good, um, Thanksgiving flags, winter flags, Christmas flags. And so there's a lot of different ways you can go with that just to branch out from t-shirts. So again, I hope you found this video useful and I hope you can get some good creative ideas out of this and I hope to see you again, all right? So take care. That's it for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.